All right, about 9.40 on the 22nd of October. It is a gorgeous day out. Currently, just a tiny bit of clouds, not really a big deal yet. Might get worse later. No wind also, just a tiny breeze right now. So what I'm doing, I started thinking, it's like, man, I got a whole bunch of bus parts I might be able to salvage something out of. Like for instance, great, one of these awesome bus blower, like uh, windshield defrosters. Right? I never used these the whole time I lived in the bus because they pull so much power. They're perfect if you're running the bus with its 100 and probably 120, 150 amp alternator. But if you shut the bus off and you ran the fan, it'd run the batteries dead pretty quick. So, yeah, I was looking on eBay. The windshield wiper motors from yesterday, the cheapest one I could find was $25 a piece. These motors are about 25 or 30 bucks a piece just for the motor, not the whole fan. These fans are expensive and they don't last forever. Um, when I worked on the postal of trucks, they had these fans in them and it's got a nice long wire. Wow, cool. Okay, so I've got two of these that kind of match. One of the things I'm trying to figure out now if I got a six-wheel drive robot, I need six motors that kind of match. It's not likely that motors are going to drive at exactly the same speed. You probably get little variations. In the gravel, that wouldn't be a huge problem. I could probably speed adjust each motor individually, too. But it'd be nice if they were kind of the same. So if I have two wiper motors, they're gear drive motors, so they come out really slow. These are going to turn really fast. Yeah, this is like for, probably for the windshield. Looking for the windshield wiper connectors. Is that the right kind of connector? All right, kind of the same setup as yesterday. How we? Hang on. I'm always nervous on this table. Make sure there's no rattlesnakes underneath. Always a possibility. Okay, so the plan. This is the same setup as what we had uh, yesterday. I was testing the wiper motors, so I've got. A master switch which actually has a breaker in it uh, overkill but whatever so these connectors are XT60s I've got a voltmeter here it shows that I've got 12 volts coming off my little battery this battery is 18650s and it's got a BMS in it so yesterday I managed to accidentally short it and the BMS just shot off really quick and that was it no problem I disconnected it waited a couple seconds hooked it up and it worked fine so hey for that uh, I found these, I, I keep making these random little things, and this was off of my battery charger. So, where this is going to be handy, these fans, in fact, on the label, it says, use a three-position switch. High is the red wire, low is the black wire, and base is ground. So you can't just run it red to hot or you know red to positive, black to ground. It won't work. That's high and low setting. So you can run this on two speeds. Okay. And to, you just then you have to ground the base. And so what we're gonna do, since I found this, I'll use this to ground to the base. Try to get a good connection on that. That should be good enough. And then my switch is off. And we can hook this one up. And then my red wire, yeah, my red clamp, I can put on either one of these. I'm leaving my gloves on today because yesterday that uh, wiper motor tried to get me. So let's see, we'll just uh, turn the switch on and bump it real quick, make sure this you know works at all. So this is the red for high. Oh yeah. And then black for low. Yeah, it's slower. Oh yeah, that's great. Okay, so this one works. I'll turn my switch off. Uh, I need all that. I'm just gonna chop this end off. You can have a relay set up 
if you had a five five pin relay, normal would be low and energized would be high. So you could have power coming to the motor and it would always be on low and then when you hit the relay it would go on high. If that doesn't make sense, I'll try to explain it later. Okay, low. Oh, switch on. Good to know the switch is working. Yeah, that's low. Yeah. Yeah, that is a definite load on the battery. It was a 12-volt battery. It pulled it down to 11.4 when it's running. And then when it's not running, it's back up to 11.9. So it, it's definitely, it hits the batteries pretty hard. This wouldn't stay running very long on a little battery. Okay. Cool. Um, oh, also, the wire bundle I found looks like it will work with the wiper motors. I do remember these fans were in the mail trucks also, though. It was the same setup. So I tried, you know, I had one on the bench. I was just going to hook it up to a battery and see if it worked. It didn't work. I was, like, kind of confused. And then I happened to see the label. Oh, okay. So that's why. So these both work. Yay for that. Let's check the big one. All right. This is covered in mouse poop. So black is black. Oh, Black and white quite often is backwards. If you see black and white, they wire it like AC wiring would be. So black is hot and white is common. Yeah, that'll mess with your head. So you run into that sometimes. So we're going to try it that way first and see what it does. So I've got a forked uh, terminal connector. I think it'll make contact in there. So we'll just kind of shove it in. See if that works. Bump it real quick. If it sees, I don't want to screw up the battery. Okay, it looks like a good enough connection. And I'll turn the switch on and then I'll just bump it and see what it does. Yep. That runs. Or it did run. Knock the battery offline probably pulled too much power. That's more likely that it pulled too much power rather than it hurt the battery. Yeah, it probably pulled too much. So we'll try it again just to see. I don't know which way it's supposed to turn. So I'm not sure if I'm going backwards or not. You could probably run this DC motor backwards. Okay, we know the motor's not seized. It probably just pulled so much power that it shut the battery off because it is showing no power so we'll just disconnect it okay probably works um, more than what I can do with that battery that's that's a good stopping point right there uh, this is pretty cool setup though um, I don't know if I would ever use it like this but it's got I mean the whole thing is set up so you've got if you hooked up a cable to here, you could slide the doors back and forth to control where the air glow, uh, goes, stop it, open it, and you can vary it even. So that might be kind of cool. Plus, this linkage on the top here opens and closes a door. Let's see this. Yeah, okay. And the way that they set it up, this is really slick. When this door is open, the one on the opposite side is closed. So you can see from one side, but you can't go all the way through unless you have them half open. So basically, it would be like choosing from recirculate the air inside the bus or pull the air from outside for fresh air kind of a thing. So you just flip it back and forth, and then you could control how much. Yeah. Kind of cool. Okay, what we got now, going into the more advanced stuff. Uh, for anybody curious, most of the things that I'm showing you, I've had for several years sitting in a box. I didn't go out and just buy this stuff. Some of this is dusty. Some of it actually looks kind of new. This is a motor controller. 
I have no idea what the specs are. I don't remember exactly why I bought it. Um, probably robot related, but I don't remember exactly. Um, all of the motors that I've been talking about on this so far are regular DC brushed motors. Not brushless like you'd have on a radio controlled car or airplane or drone or the electric bike. Simple two wire motors. Okay. Or, you know, in this case, yeah, there's a third wire, but that's just for a different speed. They don't have Hall effect sensors. They don't have crazy windings. It's just a simple, dumb motor. It doesn't have any control circuit built into it. Okay. I do have brushed motor ESCs for radio-controlled cars, though. I picked up a couple of them. I don't know how many I got. But with those, I could hook this motor to a radio controller and control the speed of it remotely. Okay, so that might be useful later. Not for a fan, but for the robot. Okay, so what this is, it's got a variable uh, potentiometer. It's got a click off and then on and then presumably minimum to maximum speed. And it's got a two position, or actually a three position switch off in the middle and then one and then off and then two. Okay. Uh, I think this is going to be for direction. Just looking at it, that's kind of my guess. Uh, so I should be able to run the fan backwards or forward and control the speed. Okay, that's what we're thinking. I uh, changed my wiring just a little bit. I found another uh, smaller clamp that will work. Um, also a note on wiring. A lot of these pigtails I've made previously. So then it's a matter of, I know that I've got a battery that works with the uh, XT60 connector. So, uh, you know, there's one end and the other, I guess, uh, one, one is male and one is female, or however, however you want to label it. Uh, so we got the battery, and then on quite a few of these, I've got, you know, I made up some connectors for something that I used at one point, and then I didn't need it, so I just saved them all, and then I can, today, like, you know, day like today, it's like, oh, look, I've got a switch that's already got connectors on it, and I've got a voltmeter that's already got connectors on it, so that makes it real easy. All right, so switches off, so I can hook this up. And I got still 12 volts, 11.9 or so. So we will set this up, switch this off, hook. Oops, I got the wrong one. Okay, fix that real quick. Remember, red is on that side. Interestingly enough, the way that the wiring is labeled, or the terminals on here, the motor output connector doesn't have positive and negative identified on the controller. And the reason for that is they're assuming the motor could spin backwards. So if you end up with your switch labeled forward and the motor's running backwards, all you'd have to do is just come over here and swap the leads and then you're good. Okay, so that's kind of cool. So you just kind of like when you're uh, I've seen guys like uh, over at uh, Drone Bot Workshop. He's like, yeah, I just wire half the motors backwards because they're on the other side of the robot. You know, that's another channel to watch if you're if you're curious about this kind of stuff. I learned a lot from watching him. Drone Bot Workshop. Okay. So hook that up. So this should have power on it, or it will when I hit the, hit the switch. This switch is in the middle off. This is down, off, ground is on. I'm running the red wire, which is the fast one. I've got the black wire, which is the slow one for the fan. I'm not using that one, so I'll just kind of pull it aside. Okay, I'll turn the switch on. Nothing should happen. And then we'll turn this to number one on this switch, which should be a direction, and then we'll turn this on. Ah, that is super slow. And it's going clockwise from my point of view, looking down. Oh, they probably sensed my finger on there. I threw off the resistance. That's really cool. Okay, so it's going clockwise. And I can get it down right to nothing. Switch it off. 
and then we'll switch the direction, and it should go counterclockwise now. Yep. How cool is that? Infinitely variable fan speed control. How many times in your car or in your house have you had the fan on low and you wish you could cut that in half? Right? This is awesome. Also, at lower speed, it's going to use less power. I'm not, I'm not able to measure my amps. Actually, I can. Hang on. Let's go do that. I'll measure my amps. Also, you can just turn it off and it'll remember that position. And you can change the direction. It's possible that this motor has a preference to run in one direction, so it might run faster forward than backwards. They would have, in making the motor, they could have timed it to work better in one direction. They weren't expecting to go backwards. But it usually will work, from what I've seen. Okay, turn that off, I'm gonna grab something. All right, my multimeter has a clamp on for checking amps. So I want to see Find a spot where I can do this easily. We'll do it right there. I think I can do this one-handed and still watch. Okay, it shows zero now. So if we just turn it on, about 0 0.25. So it's pulling something, but not doing much. Oh, that's what we'll turn the switch on. Okay, so about 0 0.2, and then we we'll turn it on. 0 0.35. And then if we turn it up, yeah, it's pulling two and a half amps. Half an amp. And that's right down to zero. Probably a little misreading there. Something worth saying, this is using PWM pulse width modulation. At any given time, this motor sees either zero voltage or 12 voltage, and then zero voltage and then 12 voltage. It doesn't see six volts at half speed. It's instantly seeing pulses of full power, uh, possibly thousands of times a second. It's clicking it on and off. Okay. Um, oh, also the relays are for direction change. It, the relays aren't controlling the speed. The speed is coming from the MOSFETs here. So what this is doing, it's making a very like a ratio between on and off if you want 50 percent speed you would turn it on 50 percent of the time so if you looked at one second you'd maybe turn it on for half a second and turn it off for half a second except that would be compressed so that you would turn it on 500 times and turn it off 500 times that equaled half a second on half a second off for example okay the advantage of that is this motor still has really good torque even at half speed because it still has full voltage. The old way of changing motor speeds was to put a great big resi resistor in there. That's how the heater in my truck worked. It just had a resistor. Okay, so it slows the motor down, but it's wasting a bunch of energy into heat just trying to slow the motor down. If they would have set it up like this, you could have a little dial that you could infinitely variable change your, your motor speed on your fan. It's like, I don't know of any vehicles yet that are doing it this way. This is the better way to do it, but it's a few more parts, cost a couple dollars. Yeah, uh, you know, guys like GM, well, we've been doing it this way for over 100 years now. Let's just leave it alone. And so that's why you end up with, you know, the windshield wiper motor that hasn't changed in 50 years, you know.
until it, until somebody else comes along and shows them a better way, they're like, no, this is good enough. Yeah. Anywho, um, I could hook up the black wire and get a maximum speed that was half of the what we had now. So that's a possibility. I may not even need to do that, right? But if I wanted to, I could have another relay that would choose between low and high range. Which might be useful for sometimes. You know, so I could slow it down or I could speed it up variable and then I could stop and I could flip into high range and then throttle it up again. So that's pretty cool. Uh, this one not necessarily made to use with a microcontroller but it might be possible to use it as such. The basic circuit could work with a microcontroller though like a Raspberry Pi uh, or a Pi Pico or an Arduino or anything like that or be controlled by the radio controller. Um, I'm not sure about that directly. Indirectly, you could. This would only run one motor or one set of motors that are hooked up together. So, if I hooked up both fans to the same terminals, I probably would get them both to run. It would pull twice as many amps. If there was any, de any deviation between the two motors, if one was really old and one was really new, they would most definitely turn at a different speed, and power tends to go path of least resistance. So if you had one controller trying to run two motors, that probably wouldn't work well. Uh, you'd end up with one motor running really good and one not running very good. Okay, so you couldn't control them individually like you would want to. Uh, we could do the same setup to change the speed of our wiper motors also. Which, I'm not going to bother right now, but the same exact setup would work. I just hook the ground up to the ground and I could hook up to one of the wire terminals and I could speed it up and slow it down. And probably, it would probably run backwards also. So, yeah, that was just kind of a fun bench test to show that it does work. I've never, I've never hooked this one up. I didn't know for sure if it would work. It should work. Okay. Um, versions of this is, you know, I found this on eBay, most likely, possibly Amazon, but probably eBay. Uh, they come right out of China by the boatload. Uh, variable speed controller for motor. This would have an H bridge in it. Uh, the H bridge um, is how a motor is controlled so that it's able to switch directions. Your cordless electric drill has an H bridge. That's also how it stops so fast, ironically. By stopping an H bridge motor, it kind of like a valve on a hydraulic system. It stops both sides from flowing. So if I'm off here and on here, so just make sure it's working. Okay. So if it's going and then I stop it, that motor, actually it's going really fast and then stop it. it stops pretty quickly. Fact, never put a screwdriver in a fan. Can't reach. It feels like it's got resistance. It's actually, I think it's trying not to move, although it's not very good at it. So maybe. Okay, let's try that. Um, how fast does it stop? easily can I do that? Yeah, if I lift the ground, I just want to see how fast the motor stops by itself if the controller isn't controlling it. Just kind of as a kind of a curiosity. So we'll just oh that's going clockwise. So I'll switch it pretty quick. Yeah, see the difference there. It coasts to a stop where the other way it actually stops it. Yeah, that's a good test. Several seconds to stop. Versus about half a second to stop. Why is that important? If I tell the robot to stop, I don't want it to keep coasting for a few seconds. This would tend to give it electric braking, 
without any actual brakes. It wouldn't necessarily keep it from moving. You can see I was able to turn the fan, but it had some resistance, so it would tend to coast to a stop, which is kind of useful, so that I don't necessarily have to find some way to then apply a friction mechanical brake. Uh, the last thing, I don't remember if I put this on the other segment, and I haven't taken the wiper motor apart yet, but if it is in fact set up with the gear drive, the gear drive, uh, I'm sorry, the worm drive, I don't know if I had described that last time, the worm drive, the big, I'm not sure which is which now, they could have a combination of it actually, the, the big sprocket has a set of teeth that look kind of like regular teeth on a, on a sprocket, but they have a little bit of a dish to them, so in the middle they're a little bit rounded profile. Uh, con concave inward and then the worm part it comes across sideways so you'd have this is your your wheel for the big one and then your side one comes in this way and it turns this way and it's got a long spiral and it's the idea is it's like a worm going around and around and around so as the worm turns it's kind of the same idea as if you had a if you held the nut still and you turned a bolt it would slowly pull the nut back and forth. Same idea. So they just did it a little bit different setup. In fact, it's, it's essentially, it's how, how a hose clamp works. Here's a perfect example. This would be the long sprocket. And by turning this, turning the screw, this is getting pulled in or out. That would be exactly how a worm drive works. And if you notice, like on a hose clamp, if you pull it hard, it doesn't tend to start this turning. It's got a lot of resistance to moving it the wrong way. But it's fairly easy to turn here, but it won't it won't back drive is, is what they what they say. Okay. So that's exactly how a worm drive is set up, and I'm pretty sure that's how the wiper motor is set up. With that said, if I stopped the motor on the wiper motor, that gear mechanism would basically stop the motor or the wheel from moving. It would just basically lock it. Um, you could still slide the robot, but that the wheels would, would skid. They would basically be stopped. And so if you use that, you don't need friction brakes. It would be really good for going slow. You could have like your automatic lawnmower or uh, something like a Roomba driving around vacuuming. You know, that wouldn't have to, uh, it doesn't have to go very fast, but it's really good at going slow. Yeah. Okay, I think we're done here. Nothing caught on fire, that's a good day. That's just fun.